And I'm like, well, why can't we be like them? Whereas mm-hmm. if you would have said, hey, this is what we're going through right now. And th- this is what we're doing to try to fix it. So I looked at my wife and I was like, yo, we need to start a podcast where we're just authentic. OK, so uh, your wife, shout out to yeah. your wife. Um, you have a podcast and like your when I say if y'all y'all look at their uh, Instagram, it's like relationship goals like everywhere. You're going to want to put that on your vision board, how they how they rock everything from their wedding to their anniversaries. It's always fire. Right. Uh, did she how did she feel and how did you guys maneuver around be, even before the the podcast, just being transparent about your relationship? I know. Between you and your daughter, there was already like, this is what we're going to do. But did your wife be like, well, hold on, I didn't sign up for this transparency. Like, I still want you to myself. I love you. Uh, We don't have to do everything. Like, how how did she feel about this journey? How did the podcast come about? Because y'all y'all have some real conversations. Hence, the the (laughs) podcast name is Real Relationships Podcast. Like, let's let's talk about it. Yeah, my, my wife is an introvert. Like I, I come from I come from sports, so I had to be in the camera my whole career. So I was used to it. I knew how to maneuver in that area. Um, but for her, it, it took a while to do it. And I basically just had to teach her that, you know, when I first started talking in public, I was terrible. When I first started doing interviews, if you look back at my interviews in college, like my freshman and sophomore year, they were awful. I, I really didn't know how to speak to people, but I didn't allow that to stop me from really honing my gift and learning how to communicate with others. Um, And I know for the podcast, the reason why we started the podcast and was really open about our ups and our downs is um, I think it was before the pandemic, I was sitting around and I was scrolling on social media and I had saw that this big, this big influencer couple had got a divorce or was getting a divorce. And I was reading their comments and everybody was just, disappointed. They're like, man, y'all were coming on your podcast and your your Instagram and y'all were talking about how great your relationship was. And I was just like, wow, that's a huge problem. But like I said earlier, it's an opportunity. I was like, people are not expecting them to be perfect because I saw a lot of comments say, we wish you just would have told us you were going through it so that we can navigate those struggles together. Because here I am going through this tough time in my relationship. And I'm like, well, why can't we be like them? Whereas if you would have said, hey, this is what we're going through right now. And th- this is what we're doing to try to fix it. So I looked at my wife and I was like, yo, we need to start a podcast where we're just authentic. We talk about the real struggles in relationships so people know that they're not alone. And then we just do our research to find out what kind of interventions people can do to really overcome those challenges. From the first episode we point out, put out, people just love this. So I was like, yo, this is something we have here, like. We're all about being authentic. We're all about being honest. So let's just call it the real relationship. And we're going to bring the real back to relationship. And she was on board because uh, I think the first couple of episodes, I was like, yo, I need to talk about um, when I cheated. And she was like, yo, you you want to talk about that already? Right. I was like, what if people start looking at you crazy? I was like, I, I don't care. Like, this is real life stuff. I was playing in the NFL. Like, I played D1 football. These are real life things that people go through. This is when I was young, but I grew older. So instead Mm -hmm. of trying to seem like I'm this perfect man or we're this perfect couple, let's show people what we went through and how we were able to overcome it. And You know, when we had that conversation, she was like, all right, let's do it. And again, people love that episode because it was something they weren't getting from other couples. Like It was real stuff that people could relate to. And we were able to show them how we were able to overcome that to have the type of marriage we have now. Hmm. Man, it's crazy because I'm, I'm a big believer in at some point, everything that you try to hide is what you oh, make public. Yeah. And people are like, oh, I, I, in a way I knew, but now I really like what you're doing because it, it humanizes you to everybody else. They understand exactly what you're saying. You're not perfect. But right. was there something that you did to maybe prepare? I don't know if it's the audience or the brand because... Here you are for a long period dedicated to a cause and and pushing that as the primary thing that you're about. Then you transition almost into something completely separate when you go into talking about relationships. Was there something that you had to do to to prep your audience or even yourself and say, all right, let me do this 
and not necessarily worry about what what I did previously, because that's almost another level of, you know, your career, you would say. Now, because I, I think that the foundation was already being laid without us knowing from us being public with our wedding, um, us being public with interviews, like people already had an inside look into our relationship. So to build something like a podcast based off of relationships was just natural. Me and my wife actually mm-hmm. talked about how we probably should have did it earlier because we had one, um, the the not dream wedding for our relationship. We got married in uh, the New York Public Library on some Sex in the City type of stuff. And we mm-hmm. was at every... Uh, <laughs> Uh, fashion week, New York Fashion Week, picking out different dressings. We were like, man, we should have just pulled out our phone and just vlogged this type of stuff to give people an inside look of what this is like because we knew it would have blew up right off the bat. But uh, I, in a sense, I'm glad we didn't because we were actually able to be fully present in that in that moment because we had been through so much the prior year with Leah battling cancer that we just needed to keep something close to ourselves. But it was like it was already building up for us to do something like this. Mm-hmm. All right, let me get in my my moose bag real quick. So, <laughs> moose, prepare to do do another uh, layup on this one. Um, so now you go from, hey, boo, we're in a relationship, we're married, and everything. To hey, we're starting a podcast, and we got to make money off of this. So now we're business partners, right? So, talk about like that transition of. How are you taking this podcast with your wife into something that's a complete brand that's bringing in uh, brand deals, sponsorships? And I know you had before launched a Patreon and things like that, like break down the different ways you guys are making money together. And how is that that relationship with, you know, husband and wife as, you know, business partners? Because like, do, do y'all? Do y'all argue about money when it's like, yo, hold on, you didn't take this deal. Like, yo, wait, I didn't, I didn't mean to. Like, hold on. Right. No, so we we didn't, we never argued about money. Um, I, I think for us, the first thing we did when we decided to make this into a business, because at first we was just going to do it for fun, is we made a pact that our marriage comes before the business. Mm-hmm. So if we're struggling in our marriage, we're not going to pick up the microphone and act like everything's good. We're not going to keep forcing ourselves to put out um, podcasts like this is our number one goal is to have a successful marriage and raise uh, amazing kids who really flourish when they grow older. And if anything comes in between that, then we got to cut that off. Uh, so for us, when we decided to make it a business we just understood the roles that we were going to have. Um, just like you would do that in a marriage, you're going to do it in a business. You understand what you're responsible for and do you do everything you can to fulfill that obligation and then you support your partner whenever you can. And then for us, we really didn't take start taking money um, until we were two, three years in because I think sometimes people just, they try too fast to start making money off their gift uh, when they should just be putting it out for free uh, it's like Frank Lewis. He's not going, he didn't, Frank Lucas, he didn't just put out blue magic and start charging people. He started giving it to their customers and giving them a taste so that they can spread the word and come back to pay for it. So for us, it was just push out as much content as possible to give people value. And then when the time is right, then we'll start asking for the money. Then we'll start putting out courses for people. Cause they're like, man, they're giving us so much for free. I wonder what they're going to give us once you start charging for things. So that's what right. we're in the process of doing right now, uh, because I didn't want to take money. When I first started learning about the the podcast game, I think it was Tim Ferriss when he was like, uh, don't start taking money until you get 50,000 downloads per episode, because then you can really start hitting companies in the head and making a lot of money. So I had told my wife at first, I'm like, yo, we can't take money. We just going to have to ride this out. We're going to continue to put out um, content. And then when we start to reach those numbers, then we're going to start to reach out to people um, and, and start, you know, selling them spots because we've had a lot of companies reach out to us that we just turned down because we didn't hit our number yet. But when we do, we're going to come back to y'all and we're going to get paid the right amount um, for our influence. Mm. Oh, that's big. Oof. That's big. Oof. Hey, I, I, I wanted to ask and I'm wondering, like, if there's ever a time where y'all got on a podcast and almost like cleaned up something that had went wrong. <laughs> right. Like previously, it's like as you're trying to fix the marriage, it's like, oh, let's use this as an outlet, because one of the things that I've realized about podcasting is I don't want to say it's therapy, but man, it is a form that can really help you solve or work through a lot of challenges that, that you might be going through. 
And it feels weird because it's you, a microphone and a camera. But before you know it, there is some growth and change and transformation that's happening just by having an outlet to really work something out of. Yeah. So for us, we we haven't had to go back and, and edit any of our episodes because we do a good job of sitting down and talking and understanding what each person is comfortable with sharing with the world so that we don't really step on each other's toes. We don't put each other in uncomfortable positions. But sometimes when we're having discussions, it may go away that we didn't think it was going to go. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. If Let's just say that if we did break out into some type of disagreement on our, our episode, we would just show people how you walk through a disagreement. Like we don't want to show people that happy couples never argue. We want to show them that happy couples argue the right way. So if we're having a disagreement on our podcast, we're just going to show people how you can navigate through those disagreements and still be able to love each other and not feel like you just tried to amputate each other in order to win the, the disagreement or the argument. Hmm.